Welcome to EKG Rhythms. Today we will discuss how to decipher a rhythm using a ladder diagram. This is a 70 year old with a history of hypertension and congestive heart failure. He is complaining of shortness of breath. Is this complete heart block? This is an irregular, narrow, complex rhythm. This is sinus because we have an upright P wave in 1, 2, and AVF, and inverted and AVR. If the R2R is not regular, then this is not complete heart block. If not complete heart block, then was it? what is it? Here's a simple way to approach this arrhythmia. Number one, it's good practice to number your QRS complexes. This will make the descriptions easier later. There are nine QRS complexes and the P waves are all over the place, but they're still regular. Now let's search for the P. If you have read other blogs or the works of Dr. Henry Marriott, then you have read the French term of searching for the P. Or did they say, Cherchez le P? Searching for the P is in one lead is not good. So I print them in full disclosure, all, all available leads. And look at the P wave in simultaneous leads. I mark the obvious P waves in red and the not so obvious P waves in green. The PP interval is about 18 small squares or about 83 bits per minute. Now let's start the ladder diagram. A ladder diagram is a tool to follow how an impulse is conducted from the atrium to the AV node down to the ventricles. A ladder diagram will make identification of arrhythmias easier. And there are three tiers or three levels. The atrial, the AV node, and the ventricular tier. Making the A and the V is easy. Just drop the line in the A using the P wave. And drop another line in the V wave using the QRS. Next, let's compare the QRS complexes. Once the AV tiers are ready or done, the next task is to connect or to figure out which atrial impulse is conducted and not conducted. This one is a little harder. What I do, or probably some of you do, is compare the morphology or the shape of the QRS and use all available leads to compare the QRS. In here, I found V1 useful. There are two QRS morphologies. They are circled in brown and in red. The QRS complex has 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8 circled in brown are smaller compared to QRS number 2 and number 7. The RR interval or the between R3 and R4, R4 and R5 R8 and 9 is regular at about 29 small squares and the rate is about 50 bits per minute and there is no constant relationship to a nearby P wave so these QRS complexes are from a junctional pacemaker QRS mark in red which are 2 and 7 
a larger amplitude compared to QRS Mark Brown. The R interval, R1 and R2, and R6 and R7, is about 1.36 seconds. This is different compared to the QRS Mark and Brown, which has an RR interval of about 1.16 seconds. There is a P wave with a PRI of about 0.12 seconds. The conductible distance of the P wave to the QRS, together with the difference in QRS morphology and the difference in the RR interval, would support the concept that QRS 2 and 7 are coming from the sinus node, or these are called captured beats. Now let's connect the A bit here. QRS2 and QRS7 are captured beat or sinus beats that were able to conduct through the AV node. QRS1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 and 9 are from the junction. Now here is the completed ladder diagram. The rest of the P waves are not conducted. So what is this arrhythmia? This is not complete heart block because some of the P waves are conducted. This is definitely not Mobitz 1 and not Mobitz 2. So this is the in-between. So this is called second degree advanced or high degree AB block. When two or more P waves are not conducted, the term advanced or high degree AB block is used. For this case, it eventually progressed to complete hard block and a pacemaker was inserted. Thank you for listening and have a good day.